familiar with anymore, no. but you know it's a real thing that you went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And I know it's, that it's the same same through. thing. It's like I got physical physically abused by my dad really bad when I was young. Mm -hmm. So looking back on those days is like like I still I I know I went through it, but it's so like well like I have no connection yeah. to that person at all because it's like there's no way I could ever put myself in that position to be. And you're such a loving father. Like it's crazy, you know. I, I, you know what I mean? So it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's true. So I think we do that um, to kind of disconnect so that we can keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a book called um, "The Body Keeps Count." Oh. So it's in our bodies. We know that it's happened. Our bodies know, even if we're not, if our mind's blocking it, our bodies know. Right. So sometimes we have to trust what we're feeling inside because we know that something happened to us that really wasn't right. The trauma. Yeah, the trauma. The trauma it doesn't really go away. It stays with us. Yeah. Um, you just learn to live with it. But in the same way we disconnect our, our body, our mind from our body, in a sense, to heal, you have to separate that in the opposite direction mm -hmm. so that you can train your mind to teach your body that, you know, to bring back down your nervous system because you're constantly wondering what's That's what like, I'm talking about. You got to be yeah. present. Yeah, you got to be present. Because you got to realize you're operating a ship. Yeah. And like, if, like yeah. anything can happen, man. You could be spiritually strong as much as you want, but still, you got to make sure that your body's... For sure. You're not and anxiety you filled. And yeah. And you learn to take nervous. care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you learn you learn through through trial, trial and, and error, error what's good, what's not good. And for me I was learning trial more than I mean errors over and over and over well, you're, again. You're, it's, 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 you're, you're amassing wealth of wisdom, that's what it is. That yeah. Well it's funny because I used to pray like fervently when I was young. For knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. I was the same way. I used to be like, I want, I want wisdom like King Solomon. Yeah, you know right. I mean? I, but you know what you need to have you have to, to have get experience, wisdom, experience. And that's what <laughs> that's we what asked for. Us it. Off. We asked for. It. It's we been did. said. It's been said that you know, even before we were born, we chose everything that happened to yeah. us. We chose our parents. We, this is the experience we want. It's just yeah. that on the way down to this level, to the third dimension, we forget. And then, in in our in our DNA is encoded messages that that we need to tap into and the best way yeah. to tap into is always being yourself always yeah. being yourself so when you tap yeah. into these encoded messages that lead you into the path your path mm -hmm. you know it builds I mean? so much resilience yeah, it builds, you know yeah, for sure I definitely built a lot of resilience um so that experience at 11 how did it shape your your, your your self-worth and how you see oh God, sex so, and so on and oh so God, forth. I was so insecure. Um, I was so insecure as a child. And those insecure, like I'm not an insecure person. Obviously, I do mm -hmm. a lot of things that are out there. But I have insecurities that come from that time. Um, I learned very early that in terms of sex that it was it was important to men. <laughs> they showed me that it and I wasn't like you say you talk about the physical abuse that you and I I endured um, mental manipulation and seduction um, even as a child and so I could hear I'm 11 or even younger than that and I can understand what men need to hear or to understand like it really just but with no concept of myself even so I was detached. I was detached from a lot of the experiences that I had. I always considered the other person because my mother was also a bleeding heart. She let, she let all of these things. So you, it was happen. more. It was more like, she you shutting off what you want. It's like I'm just going to make you happy. Yeah. That's this what you want. I'm exactly. Make you happy. This is. Yes, because that kept the love around me, and mm -hmm. I didn't know how to breathe without love. It felt like I was going to die, without love. So you you were just trading that. For that acceptance. Yes, hence the sex addict. Yeah. Uh, the sexual addiction is not about actually. Yeah, please get into that because I don't want people <laughs> to be on some low level whoring shit. You know? <laughs> not like that. No. Not like that. It was, she, it there's, was there's, there's a whole process of her going through the yeah. stages of and where she's at now. Like, she's a woman when sometimes when I'm dropping enough food for her on Sundays, she's going to church and whatnot, like, bro, just <laughs> thanks relax. For, thanks for co-signing me, like, man. <laughs> relax, so we just talk about, you know what I mean? Well, I, I also, somebody and whatnot, because of I mean? how much TV I watched and like, you learn marketing because there's so many commercials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I also have this innate ability to market myself. 
And so calling myself a sex addict is really about, and it's an indictment on our society because if you low-key understand yourself, you're all kind of driven by this carnality that is towards something else, hence the movie is called Thirsty as Fuck because we're all thirsting for something and for the majority of it, it lends back to connection, belonging, love. And so the sex addiction came about where I recognized that I would do anything and everything for a man's love. And even though most of them took advantage of that, right? So I have a lot of painful stories, but I recognized that I was bartering sex for love because that's what I was taught. Mm -hmm. I was taught that to make a man happy, you give him the cookies. <laughs> and so that's what I did. I gave him I gave them the cookies. But I wasn't also like in the streets like I was more of a monogamous sex addict in the sense that I've only ever really wanted one person, mm -hmm. but then when that person would fail me or get the abandonment or the neglect that I experienced when I was younger. You try to fill the void. Yeah. And I, I, it was like a form of cutting in a sense, where it's like when I felt that emptiness, when I felt that pressure building up of the loneliness, not of the sexual urges, mm -hmm. it was the loneliness yeah, that yeah, yeah. made me cut and accept so little because I didn't think I could have what I have now, mm -hmm. right? It's so different now than then. Um, but I work for that shit. For sure. <laughs> I work sure. really hard for yeah, that I shit. I mean, like, <laughs> you, 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 have, you have a reason to be proud, you know what I mean? To keep your head I up. Do. Because, I because, do. Because you did overcome a lot. Like, my, yeah. my, my empress, she works with abused, abused women and children. I, and I hear the stories and it's a vicious cycle for some women, you know what I mean? It where they is. can't get, where they can't break the cycle and it's like, it's, it's like, yeah. Anything else that some people are fighting, you know what I mean? When it comes to these relationships yeah. that they have with, women, um, well, with men, yeah. with, with the men yeah. in their life. But, you know, women abuse women too, and men abuse men, and it's all, all like, people abuse people at the end of the day if they can recognize that they can have gain over For sure, because look at it in the workplace. It happens in the workplace too. You exactly. You know what I mean? There's a lot of bullying going up in the workplace. Oh my gosh, definitely. I, mean? I, so. I, I felt disconnected from a lot of things growing up. And, and even in my girl, like platonic friendships, I would overgive. Um, I, I, would, I would accept so little for their friendship and mm -hmm. things like that. And I suffered from that. I was just talking to a friend of mine here, just last night where it's like, it took me a while to learn from this because I always like, I'm not going to like, I know myself, I know I have a good heart. You know what I mean? Regardless of what my heard, heard about me or what I went through, I know I have a good heart. You too. But it took me, I struggled for so long to really learn that not everybody thinks like me. Like, that was a struggle for me, you know. Like, yeah. I had to hit my head on the wall a few times, get used yeah. and kicked down in all kind of ways, you know what I mean, for yeah. me to learn this life, you know it's, what I mean? And yeah, and when, and when you get better, when you start to heal and you make different choices, sometimes the people that were a part of your life before, they don't really know how to change that. They still treat, try to treat you the same way, but you no longer accept that for yourself because you love yourself more, you, your self-esteem has increased. You can't accept certain behaviors anymore. And so you lose, there's like this exodus of people from your life. You know, the self-love and mastery of self is, is, is a cheat code to, to, this, <laughs> to, this, to this thing. And, and once you get that, it's like less is more. Meaning, yeah. when you were younger, like, ah, all these friends and all, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, more, mm -hmm. more, 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 yeah. more jewelry, more clothes, more this. When you get to a certain point and you're kind of comfortable, you, you know yourself, you know, I'm good. Yeah. Well, I'm at home, chill it. I don't need you know, to be in a club. I'm telling you, you right? I'm chill it. But, and for me, it was like, I'm so hard-headed that I had to learn all of that the hard way. When I say trials and errors, I mean like trials and errors. God literally had to like grab people and throw them out of my life. And I would be on the floor bawling because it's like an addict who's going through withdrawal. But everyone left. You resisted, you resisted the change. You were yeah. resisting the change. Yeah, and it made it harder for me in the end. But ultimately, I know, not to be cliche, but that footsteps prayer is like that poem, 100% accurate. Where I thought I was abandoned again. He was just carrying me to where I needed to go. When I, when I was locked up, I had this book where I was just, first year I was locked up, I would just write every day just sayings that come to me. And one of them was that, that I remember, that I just that I read was like, um, 
Oh, shoot, I, I lost it. Uh, I hate when that happens. I, it's the weed.